Hello guys and welcome back. The frame is back and it's as straight as a die and I'm really pleased with the work that Richard Wasco has done. And so this first part of the video is of Dave and I going up to Tacoma, Washington. It's just south of Seattle and north of Portland, about two and a half hour drive, uh, to pick up the frame at Richard's place along with the other parts that he looked at. And um, I must say it was a much more comprehensive job uh, than I had anticipated, but nevertheless, he's done a fantastic job. Um, due to the somewhat proprietary nature of Richard's work, um, there's just a couple of shots from within his workshop. But um, after the video, uh, I'll go through in a non-technical way uh, the steps that Richard told us uh, of the work that he'd, he'd gone through with the frame as well. And then um, the other the other benefit is that when we were up in Tacoma, we stopped off at the LeMay um, Car Motorcycle Museum. So I thought you might like to see a few clips of some of the amazing vehicles in that museum. And um, so, hope you'll enjoy this. I'll speak to you again soon, guys. Okay, see ya. Hello, guys. We're on our way up to Tacoma in Washington State to pick up the frame for the Manxman. I just thought you might like to see a few clips of the city. That there is the Puget Sound. And we stopped for a little bite to eat. And here's the frame. I'll explain a little bit more about it when I get back in the garage. But uh, here's just a quick close up of some of the work that Richard has done. Um, I'm really pleased with the work, and uh, but I'll go through it step by step the actual work that he's done to resolve the problems that were with the frame. And here's just a view coming back, looking back over the port town of Tacoma. There's the dome that you'll see in just a minute. And then here on the left is just this beautiful mountain, uh, Mount Rainier in Washington state. That's the highest mountain. And we took advantage of visiting the LeMay Car Museum on the way back before we set off home. This is where we attended a LeMay motorcycle show a few years ago. And then here on the right, that's the famous Tacoma Dome. This is the view from the balcony inside the museum. And I thought you might like to see a few clips of some of the motors inside. This is just a, just a smattering of some of the vehicles. And then we came across this Honda exhibit that had some of the very early Hondas. Thought you might like to see a few of them, especially the earlier models. And then some of the later ones you may be familiar with. That's a 38 speed twin. That's the bike that started the revolution. And then that BMW in the middle, just absolutely outstanding. That's the original R bath. And I couldn't help but wonder if this is very similar to the polychromatic blue that the Manx Moon will end up covered with. And then a 
few great British cars in this aisle. That's a really nice gold star. And the good old Mini. Hello, so we're back in the garage. It's just a few days later and I've labelled some of the jobs that Richard did to the frame. Uh, before we get started though, uh, Richard did say that he felt that this bike had been in a pretty serious collision, a front end collision. I think his words were, it hit something solid. So uh, I'm really pleased with the work that he's done and I hope you'll see that as this uh, project progresses. Most extensively the damage was down here with these down tubes in the frame and you'll see that it's now completely straight so this was the biggest job I would say um, the way that he does it from what I can tell is um, he has pretty substantial tables with jigs uh, mounting plates pulleys and applied physics and a lot of knowledge in terms of how he straightened out this frame so this was the first one and um, the down tubes here um, but with that uh, it it's not just that I I assumed that it was just this but it, it compromises everything and so what he'd also done was this here as well these top side rails needed to be pushed out and so he's pulled these out um, to the extent where they're now symmetrical they're now horizontal correctly flat and he's done some work here as well to to fix this the third job was the side stand as well. Um, it hasn't done so much here, but he's just brought it to my attention that the 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 thinness of the tube uh, needs to be addressed at some point. Um, what we've got is over time that this has worn away with the lug of the side stand and it's worn it down um, by about 20 thousandths of an inch and so that needs to be fixed. Um, the fourth item was over here and th these are the shock absorber mounts they were bent uh, he straightened those all out and similarly at the bottom here the rear foot peg mounts as well they were also badly bent and he's repaired those so uh, number six I'll turn the frame over but what we have underneath underneath here we have some sort of like um, pads or mounting plates for the center stand and so when the center stand retracts it knocks up against these uh, pads and so he's reinforced those on both sides with some weld and he's, he's built those up and then number seven is the the swing arm he checked this thoroughly for straightness um, I think he did a few little uh, adjustments to this but now this is also straight and matches the frame and here are some of the other parts that he checked as well so he checked the triple trees to make sure that they were straight and this was also straight and hadn't been damaged um, he also checked the axles um, I may be replacing at least one of them maybe even both of them anyway which is fine um, he also checked the fork tubes the stanchions as well um, he found that they were actually from a commando which makes sense I think perhaps during the collision the original fork tubes were damaged beyond repair and replaced with some later ones but they are just a little longer I think he said it was three quarters of an inch longer um, but I do have new fork tubes and everything else uh, was checked as well 